Hello, I'm Johnny Draws and I draw a lot of fake Pokemon. And today, I want to draw what Pokemon would look like if they age naturally. Like, what does a Grandpa Pikachu even look like? But before we get to drawing, let's explore Game Freak's design for aging. And the first question I have is, do Pokemon even age? Immediately, I think about evolution, where Pokemon transform into the next stage of growth. We can clearly see they go from babies to edgy teenagers and then to adults. So in a way, Pokemon evolution feels more like puberty. Like this Raboot is clearly hiding its acne scars. Then around like level 30, he has to make car payments, rent, and now he's running around shirtless screaming at capitalism. So yeah, adulthood. But now we run into our first problem. According to the official definition of Pokemon Evolution, they transform into another species entirely. So it's more like a Chihuahua puppy transforming into a wolf. Not quite a natural progression for aging. Also, what if Pokemon choose not to evolve? Because with every evolution, you could just say no. And I answered, just say no. Does that mean they choose not to grow up? It's pretty funny to think Pikachu says no to becoming an adult, and then lives in his mom's basement making Pokemon videos on YouTube. Ah, <sighs> where did that come from? Even in the anime, in episode 67, we see an older Pikachu with wrinkles around its eyes. And in episode 7 of Ruby and Sapphire, we see an older Trico as well. Old, unevolved Pokemon. So then that means we can conclude that evolution does not equal aging, but Pokemon do age. My follow-up question to that is, can Pokemon die of old age? We know for certain Pokemon can die because in the first game, Pokemon Red and Blue, Cubone's mother Marowak dies and becomes a spirit. I mean, even Lavender Town has a full graveyard. And in episode 21 of Sun and Moon, a Stoutland passes away from old age, confirming that yes, Pokemon do die of natural aging causes. That being said, I would take the anime with a grain of salt because after 25 years, Ash is still 10 years old. How does that even work? Now my final question is, if Pokemon can die of old age in the anime, how come they don't die in the official games? And the easy answer to that is, well, for little 10 year old Timmy here, that would be pretty traumatizing. Instead, you could pick up your old Pokemon Silver and go back to your Game Boy Color and all your original buddies are still there locked in time. But what if this was all a conspiracy? What if there was a real reason why Pokemon cease to age and can live forever? Who benefits from Pokemon not growing old? Who is behind it all? Oh, by the way, a disclaimer, I'm gonna create a whole new storyline, and I know a lot of you guys just want to see my drawings, but, 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 before you skip, let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook! Welcome to Pokemon and the Forgotten Years. At the start of your journey, you walk through Viridian Forest. There, you encounter a Pikachu in the wild. It has an odd red scar on its stomach. You assume it must be from a previous battle. When you try to use a Pokeball, it does not succeed. However, Pikachu chooses to travel with you on foot. Through all the ups and downs, challenges and battle, Pikachu sticks with you. And at the end of your journey, you become the champion with Pikachu by your side. As you enjoy retirement and other post-game adventures, you realize your Pikachu is a little different from all your other Pokemon. It has aged dramatically. This is aged Pikachu, the seasoned champion. I wanted to draw an old Pikachu, but just adding crow's feet and wrinkles around the mouth didn't sit right with me. For example, dogs don't really age like that. Their fur loses color and they lose fat in certain places, and they get this like white mask around their face. So I wanted to make my drawing reflect these physical changes. Like a retired athlete, it should have some aching body parts, so I gave it a bad hip, and it uses its tail as a walking stick. I think it would make sense for it to be part normal type, like as it got older, it outputs less electricity. Let's say its ability is scrappy. Though Pikachu is old now, it's still very strong and active. As a seasoned veteran, it also knows how to deal with ghost types and can't be intimidated. So this is aged Pikachu. Having an old Pikachu does not bother you. You just assume it's natural. However, you notice that all your other Pokemon have not changed even after many years of traveling together. Maybe there is something wrong with your Pikachu. So you start doing your own research, but you can't find any relevant information on aging Pokemon at all. The only relevant clue you find is about a rare Torterra found in a remote place called Budding Town. Apparently, this Torterra looks unique and looks older than your typical Torterra. You and Pikachu fly immediately to Budding Town to see what this is all about. After looking around, you finally find it by an elementary school. 
This is H. Torterra, the comforting caretaker. I always loved the asymmetrical design of Torterra's back. The tree on the back already made me think of The Giving Tree, a children's book about how a tree slowly over time gives his body to the next generation. So maybe Torterra did the same thing. So now it just has a stump, and his tree was used to build a swing for the grandkids. Maybe its new typing can be ground and fairy, because Torterra is now used as a safe space for children to play. It should have a magical and more approachable typing. Also, let's say it's lost its grass typing because it gave its tree away. Its ability can be Pastel Veil, which prevents your friends from being poisoned. This is H. Torterra. As you're observing this Torterra, a girl appears and feeds in an apple. Her name is Marcy, and she is a research assistant, and she has been studying Torterra for years. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. She sees your aged Pikachu and invites you to meet her professor. As you walk into the house, you're greeted by a talking Clefairy. Ouch! Oh, hi! It notices how surprised you are, and so it walks into a large machine and transforms into a human. His name is Bill, and he's the inventor of the Pokemon storage computer system. He says that all Pokemon DNA can be mapped into code, and that this machine can convert his body into energy and reshape it into the exact code of a specific Pokemon. In the same way, Pokeballs vaporize Pokemon's physical body and convert it into data. That being said, after doing tests on your Pikachu, he points out that our Pikachu is different. Its DNA is volatile, and it rapidly changes. Because its DNA keeps rapidly changing, a Pokeball will not be able to process its data. You ask Bill, what will happen to your Pikachu? Bill is silent. Instead, Marcy says she will show you. She takes you deep into a nearby forest. On the way, she explains that she used to have a Froakie that she loved. It was her best friend. However, as more time went on, her Froakie's appearance would change as well. And eventually, she lost it for good. You arrive at the location she points to, and you see her past Croakie. This is aged Froakie. It is made out of stone and has completely become inanimate. I wanted to reference the stone frogs and they would be found in shrines of worship. Froakie settled for more meditation and sitting still until it turned into stone. This also made me naturally think of stone statues as water fountains, and the design just made so much sense. Let's say it's a rock water type, and let's give it the ability comatose, which makes it permanently asleep, as this aged Froakie will stay still in this position forever. This is aged Froakie. As Marcy grieves over her lost Froakie, she says she hopes to find a solution so we can save Pikachu from dying. At the same time, you realize that Froakie also has a red mark, just like your Pikachu. Maybe this is a clue to what's happening to our Pokemon. You and Marcy go back to Bill to examine it. He says that the DNA structures around this mark seem more volatile than the rest. He suggests that we go see the premier scientist on DNA research, Dr. Blaine, one of the main scientists involved in the Mewtwo project. Bill goes into his machine and transforms himself into an Aerodactyl. He flies you and Marcy to Cinnabar Island. You approach the mansion that Dr. Blaine is rumored to reside in. The mansion is empty and messy, however, it is filled with Pokemon with all red marks. They are also slightly odd looking. They are all poisoned, sick, and dying. You have a bad feeling about this, but you continue onwards. You find a hidden entrance that leads to a basement laboratory. There you find Blaine working on something. Blaine is surprised to see intruders and demands you leave. But suddenly he sees your old Pikachu with the red mark. He says it's beautiful, and it represents everything he's been working for. Marcy demands that Blaine explain what the mark is and if he had anything to do with her Froakie dying. Blaine says that the whole world has been lied to, that 300 years ago, the inventor of the original Pokeball knew that the only way to convert the massive amount of Pokemon into data was to make their DNA uniform and consistent. That's when he did the unthinkable. He released an airborne virus that affected every single Pokemon on Earth. The virus binds itself to each Pokemon's DNA and prevents it from changing. Only through really emotional and physically demanding events, a Pokemon's immune system will be strong enough to temporarily break through the virus's hold and evolve into a new form. However, this is all unnatural. He brings out his Arcanine, or what should be an Arcanine. Blaine says this is a natural Pokemon. No two Arcanines should be the same. Instead, because of the virus, Arcanines are locked into this appearance so that they could be easily coded and stored in Pokeballs. 
It revolutionized the world. Fast trading, easy transport, Pokemon have become unchanging and digitally immortal. But to Blaine, this is an abomination. We have stopped the natural chaotic beauty of these creatures. And that's when he began working on a cure. He calls it the Chainbreaker Serum, which has antibodies that fight the original virus. Marcy speaks out and asks if Blaine was the one who killed her Froakie. Blaine simply replies that he tested a serum on many Pokemons in the wild. Her Froakie and your Pikachu might have just been part of the sample, but he clarifies that the changes that happened to them were all natural and her Froakie's death was all part of its life cycle. You ask Blaine, what about the sick Pokemon in the mansion? Why are they poisoned? He says the Chainbreaker Serum is not perfect. Only 10% of the test Pokemon survive. Yet, he is willing to spread the cure throughout the whole world as the surviving Pokemon can repopulate and renew this world in its natural form. Marcy cannot accept this. You join her for a double battle against Blaine. Blaine has no Pokeballs. Instead, a dust storm appears around Blaine, and a Charizard appears. This is aged Charizard. I wanted to make Charizard into an old sage, like it no longer has a saturated orange like a strong fire, but more like the end of a campfire when things are ashy and smoky. It's clearly in reference to a design of an old wizard like Gandalf. I also think it would be cool if it used more like crafty smoke tricks to fight instead of pure firepower. Oh, rapaz! I think it would make sense if it was a fire and ground type, as it no longer flies but fights in ash, dust, and smoke. How about we give it the ability White Smoke, which prevents its stats from being lowered. This is aged Charizard. After defeating Blaine, you and Marcy restrain him and call the local authorities. They shut down his lab and lock up his serum. Marcy looks conflicted. In some ways, Blaine's experiment was a success. But the cost of 90% of the world was too much. He had to be stopped. After the battle, your Pikachu looks tired and more out of energy than ever before. Its final hours might be approaching. Out of her pocket, Marcy pulls out a Master Ball. She says she stole it from Bill's lab. She says that the Master Ball is a supercomputer and has the processing power to convert your Pikachu's unstable DNA into code. This will allow you to keep your Pikachu forever in this Pokeball or in your storage computer. She says the pain of losing her Froakie was too much and would never want someone to go through it as well. She gives you the Master Ball. You look at your Pikachu and think about all the battles you fought together. The journey of many years traveled as a team. Does Pikachu want to move on or will you force it to stay with you forever? Whoa, that went into a direction I did not expect. I might have cooked a little too much there. <clears throat> Anyways, thanks for watching and you know, making this video was a ton of fun and I'm still exploring ideas on what to do for my next video. So leave in the comments if you have any fun ideas for what new fake Pokemon I should make next. Anyways, like and subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.